Creative Katie, Karen Birchill here. Welcome to my channel and another art journal tutorial. Today I am working in my repurposed recipe binder that I bought at the thrift store and I'll put a link to that video where I show you how I repurpose it and the things I look for when I'm selecting a book to be altered and turned into an art journal. So I grabbed some gel prints. Now this one, I have, I've used a mark making tool on it and you're gonna see that mark making tool later on because I'm gonna use that again. And I'm just grabbing, I had these papers on my desk from other projects and so I was gluing them down on a couple pages. I had no plans. I thought, you know, instead of taking these and sorting them out and putting them back, where they belong, I'm just going to put them on the pages. The blue ones there that have used the stencil quadrifoil uh, are on deli paper, and that gives a different texture to the page. So I'm gluing these down, overlapping some of them because I like the way that looks. It gives a relationship between them. I'm gluing it down with my fluid matte medium. This is the Liquitex brand, and I'm absolutely in love with this stuff. I used gel medium for years and just recently, you know, wanted to use up some of the fluid medium that I had that I never liked in the past. But I fell in love with it. Maybe it's because I'm doing more collage now. I'm just putting that on and letting it dry. I definitely will be doing more gel printing on deli paper. So then I'm grab these and I'm just putting gesso in between on the blank page. And the reason for this is it kind of buffers the edges and it's turning all these unrelated pieces, giving them some connection. And wherever I put the gesso will take medium differently color later on in a different way than where there's not. So this is part of a sink liner and I'm brayering black paint on it and using it as a stamp to make those wavy pictures. So on that yellow sheet I use a, another sink liner to use on the gel plate and here I'm just putting the some leftover paint. I have this all out and it's dirty, so I'm just making some deli paper, collage papers for another project using up the paint. I just wanna fill in the white area, so I pick an aqua color and I'm just applying it to those areas that didn't have paint with a makeup sponge, coming in with a baby wipe, wiping it off, just till I like the look. It's very much with the waves there. It definitely is reading ocean. So I have this stencil and I'm going to show you. That was made with the other dish or sink liner. It was plastic. I photocopied it. I put it underneath and I cut my own stencil. And I'm just showing a very quick sneak preview of that process. So underneath is just copy paper where I've copied the dish liner or sink liner and now I'm just cutting it slowly and carefully. So this is all about we're using those mark making tools. So once the stencil was made and this was done over several days. So this is a completely different day than the two other parts of this. I just grabbed this half done page and I decided, you know, I want to test out my, my stencil here. So I grabbed it and I'm putting these blue triangles using my stencil. And I'm just adding these marks to it. And I'm going in a group of three, kind of in a triangle. Just add it more blue to this. And again, other than I'm thinking definitely water and blue with the waves, I really had no plan for this. 
But because of that, I did find clip art mermaid. I went and I found some mermaid sea sentiments. And I, whenever I print off some, I, I try to have a whole collection. I try different fonts and sizes. And then I, I, I audition them on the page. And I've included a picture of another page where I've used um, some of the sentiments that I didn't use on this one. Because they just go into my stash at the ready. Now, while I like the other orientation better, it just didn't work with the way the waves were. So this is raw copy paper. And in order to help it take paint a little bit better, I'm putting some clear gesso on it. I still want to see the lines coming through that are on, on there. So now I'm coming in and I'm giving the first base coat of color orange hair because I think that orange is really going to pop. It's a complementary color to the blues that are in the background. And then I'm also picking colors for her body that are really going to pop against that blue background. So here I'm looking at these colors. Both of those colors would really pop. But with her orange hair, I thought I'm going to go more onto the pink tone here. Or deep violet, as the case may be. And I like how I can still see the pattern throughout. If I had used white gesso, that would have obliterated those lines. Not that I couldn't have painted them on myself. So I'm loving how this mermaid is really popping off of my background. I want to add a little bit of blue into, you know, the scales. Just from, introduce that color from the background into the focal point. And into the tail there as well. So I'm using what was there as the guide, as a base for whatever details I want. I'm just adding a little bit of silver to get a little bit of shimmer into this mermaid. And you can't really see that on camera, but in real life, it does shimmer and shine just that little bit. I'm adding some details to the hair. Because remember, that was a base coat. Well, actually, I'm painting the starfish and I'm making it the same color. I mix the silver with the deep violet because I want that to shimmer. Now I'm just edging it with black paint on the makeup sponge. It's really hard to catch on the camera. And now I'm coming back and I'm just adding some highlights shading in her hair. So I don't want it to be one flat color. I grabbed, you know, I was thinking my girl was very ethereal, and so that made me think of this stencil from the Crafters Workshop, ethereal, and it defines, I love these words, and I thought, you know, I'm going to put that just right across the whole background. I'm using archival black ink, and I'm using a makeup brush to apply it. And I'll put a link to those and the stencils in the description box below. And you will note that um, Ninny's Napkins now carries TCW stencils. Um, great shipping rates. Go through the link in the description box and say hi to Nicole for me. Edging this with black. So you can see my background that happened over time, just piecemeal, whatever was on my desk, adding it. I quickly have. A completed page. So now I am deciding which sentiment I want, what's going to fit. You know, and at first I think, okay, I'm going to make these rectangular. 
And something about the rectangle straight edges just wasn't jiving with, I think, the wave action that I wanted to get. So I played around a lot. And then I decided I'm just going to fussy cut, lazy fussy cut around these. I didn't want the white on this. Sometimes the white just really pops on a background and looks really good. Alternatively, I could have used them in the rectangular shape and put a wash of blue paint so they kind of meld into the background a little bit more. So you have lots of options when you're using sentiments that you've printed off on your printer. So I'm still playing with where I want the sentiment to go. And sometimes what I do is I stop and I take a picture and then I compare pictures. So now that I'm happy with the orientation and the placement of all the pieces of this page, I'm using the matte medium again and brushing it under and over. and just flattening it. Now I am going to do some shading and this is going to make the mermaid pop on the page. I'm using, using the floating acrylic technique and I will put a link to the video where I show explicitly how to do this technique. It was something that was requested by many, many people and there is a video just for you guys, if you're interested in learning this technique. It's someone that I tend to use an awful lot, and I rely on it to do shading and highlighting. I'm using an angle brush and black paint. And you can see from the beginning to the end, the difference that makes. It just sets everything off. So now I'm using a little bit of charcoal in here. On the inside, I'm thinking maybe that'll give it a little softer look. But I do go back to the shading, the floating acrylic technique. But both work for shading. So if you can't do one or it doesn't work for you, then you definitely do the other. I love how that script of that ethereal stencil shows through in there. Now I'm just edging the page a little bit more. I want a little bit more black to frame the page. This would be so cute on a canvas in a little girl's room. So I take my white gel pen, secure gel pen, and I'm just doing some doodling inside the stencils, the stenciling that I've done. It just adds a little bit of white, a little bit of another layer of interest to your page. I added it to the scales, didn't like it, came back with a baby wipe, which you can. If I leave it till the next day, that is permanent. The pen is permanent, but at this point it was not. I traced that with white, didn't like it, took it off, decided to trace it with black instead. So coming up are close-ups of this finished page, which I love. I love the pop of color. I love how everything just came together. And there's my recipe book, and I'm just putting it in, a couple C, C pictures. 
And you'll see in there the other page that I did using one of the sentiments that I typed up at the same time. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Do me a favor. Go over to Instagram and become a follower. Bye for now.